are listening to the most original talk radio station anywhere. We are L.A. Talk Radio at latalkradio.com. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hi, welcome to Question Reality. I'm your host, Priscilla Leona, and we are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. If this is your first time tuning in, our show is every Sunday live, of course, every Sunday from 5 p.m. to 5.50 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Our show will help you to question your career reality. Now, this show is for you if you were, are, or might be considering a career in the entertainment industry. Our guests will provide you with advice, tips, and resource information on how and what it takes to successfully pursue a career in show business. Our guests work in various professions of entertainment, so that means that we will definitely have someone on the show sooner or later from a career that you are interested. If you want to check out our past guest read their bios, listen to their interview instantly, or download one of the shows, go to the LA Talk Radio website. That's latalkradio.com. Click on the link at the top of the website that says Channel 1. Scroll down, look for the graphic of our show, Question Reality, and click that link. This will take you directly to our archive page, and that is where you can view the list of our past guests. Now, our shows are also available for download on iTunes under the podcast section, and we're also available on uh, down, for download on Stitcher.com. You just type in Question Reality Radio in the search box, and you will find us there. If you want to find out about our future guests, then you have to go to our official website. Website, which is a different website, and that is questionrealityradioshow.com, questionrealityradioshow.com, and this has all the guests from uh, this year as well as next year, and we're already booking for April, so if you know someone that works in the entertainment industry professionally and wants to be a guest on the show, please have them email me, Priscilla Leona at yahoo.com and we will review their information and possibly have them on as a guest next year so let's start doing that promote 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 and we have a fantastic guest as always on the show today and I am as you know from listening in I am not the best at pronouncing foreign words or names or places I guess people, places, or things, we should just say. And so if I butcher this lady's name, I apologize in advance. Uh, her name is Layla or Lila Patrone. Uh, she is an assistant director and a producer. And we're going to talk about tons of stuff today. Some of the topics that we'll be talking about is uh, her uh, Spike Lee's Kickstarter film campaign for uh, Da Blood of Jesus, D-A. I can't, you know, make it sound cool. I just can't do it, but the Blood of Jesus, uh, as well as how to get a job as a first assistant director, a second assistant director, uh, or a production assistant on the film. She's going to help give you some tips, advice, and resource information on that. And uh, we'll be asking her some questions such as what are some things to consider before accepting or declining a job as an assistant director or production assistant? Uh, what would you consider to be the most important? skills to learn uh, to be an assistant director or production assistant. So lots of questions that you really need to know before you decide to pursue a career in that. Um, I lost my mind. My mind. I'm losing my mind today. I'm losing it in that career field. Thank you very much, Priscilla. Okay, you got it back together. Now, before we talk to Layla, I I do want to tell you about something exciting. My friend Christina Lenhart, along with Michael L. Rose, wrote, produced, and directed 
uh, and Christina also starred in this really super cool it's just such a really cool documentary it's only a half an hour it's a half an hour short documentary and it's called Guantanamo Circus and it is about a troop of circus performers that were cleared by the FBI the CIA Homeland Security and the Pentagon and they take their act to the home of one of the most notorious prisons in the world, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. And the singers and dancers and jugglers, musicians, uh, aerialists, there were musicians, they don't have any idea of what is uh, waiting for them when they arrive. So this particular documentary, uh, you will see what happens as they step uh, into time of this capsule of Guantanamo and it's sort of like a surreal town like right out of the twilight zone and what's exciting is two-time Emmy nominee Stephen Reich is set to moderate the question and answer along with the filmmaker and some of the circus member who actually visited Guantanamo and it's rated PG so you can bring the kids and it's playing tomorrow night Monday night uh, October 28th at 7 30 and it's at the Westwood Crest Theater Westwood Crest Theater and that's 1262 South Westwood Boulevard in Los Angeles 1262 uh, South Westwood Boulevard right in West LA for anyone who knows the area and there is a, one of my favorite things a dessert reception to follow so my god I definitely want to be there for the dessert reception uh, the parking meters for those of you who know West LA and you're thinking oh my god it's so congested I don't know if I want to go the parking is atrocious well the parking meters are free after 7 p.m. and then there's also street parking for free on the side streets west of Westwood Boulevard and then there's also a four dollar lot behind the theater I always choose to go lot parking I just can't risk the street parking I'm just not a risk taker very low risk so I always have to throw the lots in there uh, now for four, for more information and if you want to buy tickets you can still do that go to the website it's toonstub.com T-U-N-E-S-T-U-B dot com and just type in Guantanamo Circus Guantanamo Circus uh, and you can also look at the trailer on YouTube uh, by typing the same name and then you can also look it up on IMDB and of course they have a page on Facebook under Guantanamo hyphen circus and if you people I can hear some people now going how do you spell Guantanamo well that's exactly what I said it's G-U-A-N-T-A-N-A-M-O G-U-A-N-T-A-N-A-M-O circuit hyphen circus is on Facebook so there you go everybody should go and see this tomorrow it is very exciting very interesting exciting and who doesn't love documentaries I love documentaries okay so let's get back to our guest today uh, and again, if I butcher her name, she's going to tell me in a couple of minutes, but uh, Leila Lila Patron, she was born in London and she is of Italian and Dominican descent. She is the daughter of actress Iris Peinado. I hope that's right. Um, and Leila also, uh, she began acting at age five, I guess following in the footsteps of her mom. And some of her notable performances have been in, and uh, be prepared people, because you know I butcher these foreign words, in Luigi Magno's historical masterpiece, State Buene Se Poteti. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We're going to have her repronounce that. Um, she was also in, she had the role of Pina for Spike Lee's Miracle at, at uh, St. Anna. And she was a damsel in distress for the popular Italian music video. Oh, here's a similar word. Guantanamera. I think that's the song. Guantanamera, I'm not sure, I can't, maybe I'm wrong, uh, by Banda Basati. 
And currently, uh, Layla, Lila, we're going to find out, Layla hyphen Lila uh, Petrone is working professionally as an assistant director and producer, as well as working on her own short film, which she will be directing this winter. So, without further ado, Layla, Lila, are you there? Hi, Priscilla, yes. I'm oh here. my God! How, how how bad did I butcher your name? First of all, why don't you say your name so we can get it right? Of course, it's Lila Petrone, and believe me, you did a great job because I <sighs> often get you know wild things. So you did an amazing job. My God, I'm out of breath and I'm so tense about the whole thing. It's like my God, I hate. <laughs> I hate to ruin names, but it just happens. Now, let's go back to, uh, you were in Luigi Magno's historical masterpiece. Can you please state that name for me? Of course. It's called State Buoni Se Potere. State, hello? Are you there? Buoni. Oh, okay. State okay. Buoni Se Potere. Oh boy! Okay, yay! All right, and I I think I did get Guantanamera, didn't I? I got that. Yes, you did. Woo! Yes, you did. All right. Well, we uh, I actually met you. I actually technically didn't meet you, but uh, you were one of the people that I selected to interview with uh, Yolanda Bugs to work on her uh, recent. One of her productions, I can't remember which one, but that's how I met you. And that's how we stayed in touch. And we became Facebook exactly. friends. And that is how it worked. Okay. So let's get into talking about the career, the career of the first assistant uh, director, the second assistant director, and the production assistant. We are going to ask questions about that. But I always start the show with a question, or at least I try to start the show with a question of when you were little. When you were a child, what did you want to do professionally when you grew up? What did you see yourself doing or being? You know, that's funny that you asked that question. I mean, my dream was to be a singer. I thought I was going to be a singer. I thought until I was 15 that I was going to be a singer. And then, of course, you know, you, you no. start reevaluating your voice. What? <laughs> well, what? What? Oh, okay. So you were like me. You knew for sure you were going to be the next Diana Ross or Madonna, right? <laughs> and everybody, of course, yes. says, oh, my God, you're so good because they're family and friends, right? And they're all sugarcoating you up and, you, and you're out there just rocking yourself. And then all of a sudden you get the Simon Cowell reality. I can't sing. Somebody says, what the hell are you doing? What is that coming out of there? What are those sounds? Yeah. They're, they're unholy coming out, I've been told. You, you but, know what's funny? I, I was very shy, which I think is one of the reasons why, you know, because nowadays people can sing and, you know, there's a lot of ways of singing. But my myth was Whitney Houston. And, of course, I wanted to have that voice. And I thought if I don't have that voice, I'm not going to sing. And right. again, you know, you then move on and, you know, figure oh. out something else. Oh, my gosh. Well, uh, your your mom uh, is also an actress. And was she mm -hmm. was she a singer? Did she sing as well? Or was she just an actress or? Yeah, you know what? She didn't sing. I mean, she had to sing in a in a in a number of, uh, of uh, films that she did. But she was definitely not a singer. She was an actor. And, you know, that was really her career. And I think that was also something, you know, as a child, everybody would come to me and say, oh, so you're going to be an actress like your mother. And I used to always say, no, no, no. Even though, of course, you know, like you mentioned before, then I, I used to get parts just kind of because I, of my mother or people always just assumed that I wanted to be an actor. And I think that's also why for a long time I stayed away from the entertainment just because I felt like people just expected me to be an actor. And, you know, and I kind of was like, I'm going to be an intellectual or I'm going to, you know, work at the UN. So I was kind of just going to a different path. But then your path always calls you back. So you can't change it. Now, your mom, Iris, uh, she, what, she was an actress in what country was she an actress in? in what you know, she was an actress in Italy. She's from Dominican Republic. She went to Italy when she was very young. That's where, you know, she met my father in London and they fell in love. And she was acting in Italy. So uh, Italy was definitely where she did most of her career, and still today, you know, she's still there, and she still acts in Italy. That's what I was going to say. Is she still acting 
did, she still keeping up her acting chops, doing some stuff, or? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, actually, she just recently wrapped the film, uh, which I'm very excited for her because it's with a great actor and the, and crew. So she's still, you know, doing her thing, and I think that's the beauty of being an actor that you really, you know, there's no there, there's no retirement. My sister just went off to college, and she's kind of really re opening up and doing her thing, which is beautiful. Now, uh, for those of you who want to check out her mom, her mom's name is Iris. Uh, I hope this is pronounced right. Peynado, P-E-Y-N-A-D-O. Yeah. yeah? Woo! Yeah. Woo! You actually got my mother's name perfect. <laughs> Woo! Oh, about more than yours. I can pronounce Iris. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, people look her up uh, and uh, check her out. Her mom seems like a fascinating woman. I was looking her up on IMDb. So mm-hmm. um, uh, I'm sure there are many, many projects in her future. Very exciting. And uh, to live in Italy, my God, who wouldn't want to be an actress in Italy? My Lord, have mercy, the Italian men alone. I'm more on the food. <laughs> I'm more excited about the food, but okay, the men too. Maybe in my 20s, I'd be more excited about the men. Now the spaghetti and meatballs would be calling me out the door more than the men um now what what now with your mom being uh an actress was she supportive of your career choice uh of you saying okay i want to be a singer and then eventually i want to be an actress Did, was she supportive of that you know, she actually was, because when I was a child, her only worry, because she was a working actress, she was always worried about children working, you know, in the industry. So she would always make sure that if I did something that she was available, like I did a film when I was 10 years old, and I really wanted to do it, and she made sure that she was there with me on set and, you know, cater to... Uh, but when I wanted to be a singer, she always sent me to singing classes. I mean, the woman actually, you know, worked very hard to to help my dream come true. But I think I've learned that it's something that is inside of you. As much as I love to sing, I probably didn't um, have the the drive that you need because I see that I have the drive now for what I'm doing, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so I realized that it's something inside of you. And as much as I still love to sing, you know, sometimes now as an adult, I do showcases, people call me to sing, but that's, that's a hobby. Yeah, and yeah. as a hobby, I can do it, and I'm very happy. But I don't think I would be able to have a career. Yeah, in and that it's very, field. it's very important that you get a hold of yourself and you realize at some point, if you're pursuing a career as a singer or an actor, model, whatever you're doing, you got to get a hold of yourself. I mean, at some point, you say, well, maybe I should just kick this to the back burner and it should be a hobby because I'm really not the greatest at this or I don't have as much passion for it. So mm-hmm. you got you to gotta know when to hold them and know when to fold them, uh, as Kenny Rogers points out. Now, you... Uh, you, you you used to live in London. So my question is, why in uh, living in England for six months as I did uh, after I graduated college? My I, I didn't want to leave. They had to deport me from the country. I stayed there until my visa expired. <laughs> my question to you is, why would you leave London to pursue a career here? London is just thriving with great television and film. Have some of the best actors in the world. Why, girl, did you leave London to come here? Well, actually, let me let me correct you. I was born in London, but you know, my parents went moved to Italy, so I ended up. Uh, I was raised in Rome most of my life, uh, and you could say the same thing. You know, Italy is definitely one of yeah. you know, most some of the greatest films done in Italy, but I finished college and I came to the United States. So, Uh, you know, my, uh, my growth really started here and, you know, I go back to Europe often, but it's hard when you live here to, you know, I think to, to try to pursue a career also in Europe. I'm already by coastal between the East coast and and LA and it takes a lot of, you know, work because when you're Mm -hmm. here, you're, you know, you're networking here and then you go to New York and you're networking there Mm-hmm. So right now to pursue, you know, a career in Italy or in England for the matter, I think, you know, you also have to look into, you know, where you're at in your career and you set your goals for the future. And I think I start looking at potentially, especially with Italy, because that's really where I have my connection. And obviously I know a lot of people in the industry. So I would assume that if I were my next step would probably um, be in Italy 
Mm, yeah, you have a lot of connections there. Now, so uh, when you decided you didn't want to pursue the singing career, how did you first get started in film? Did you start acting or did you start as a production assistant? What was like your first project? You know, um, again, when I was young, I was getting calls from friends. Oh, can you be in the film? And everything was just for fun. And then after college, I moved to New York. And my first job was actually at Metro Golden Meyer. So I, it, I was doing events, actually, at Metro Golden Meyer. So I was in the industry of film, but I was doing something totally different. So event planning and, and uh, fundraisers, for the matter. And then I did that role that you mentioned before in Miracle Santana. And I couldn't say no, because of course, it's so exciting. You know, you're going to be in a movie with an amazing director. And, and even though it was a, a very small part, it definitely changed my life because the morning after when I woke up and I remember, you know, my parents are sitting there looking at me. So you want to be an actor now? Like, you know, there's a man that have changed that has changed a lot of careers. And I woke up and I said, you know, no, I don't want to be an actor, but I know I want to be behind the camera. And that was the moment that I felt you know, all my life, I knew I wanted to be a singer. I knew I had to be something that was involved with the arts. I just didn't know what it was. And I have a very business side of me. So all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, I'm going to start being a production assistant because you, I didn't know where to start from. So how am I going to figure out what I want to do? And, you know, some of my friends told me, you know, go online. There's a website, mandy.com or even on Craigslist. And I started working for free as a PA and I I realized I loved it and I was good. And then people were like, oh, you want to be, you know, the second AD? And, and so all of a sudden, I went from doing something for free and understanding, you know, how to make coffee on set to, to kind of just growing. And then people call you back. And so all of a sudden, I was like, when I realized that I would wake up in the morning at 3 a.m. to go to set and I'm waking up with a smile, it, that's when you know this is what I want to do. This is the career I want to, you know. Do and I don't care if I'm going to be broke or whatever. You just know that's that, and that's really how it all started. Well, what? Well, let's go back because I got lots of questions. I uh, what attracted you to the position of the production assistant? What? Because you were you because we were just talking about okay, so you were in Spike Lee's Miracle of Saint Anna acting, and then something happened for you to say, hmm, I'm more interested in in the position of being a production assistant, what was it that, that attracted you to the production assistant position? Um, let's say that I thought I was more interested in being behind the camera. And, you know, and they always say the best way to start, of course, is as a production assistant. Because as a production assistant, you can work with different departments. So it's an opportunity to... You know, maybe you're working with a costume designer. Maybe you're working with the art department, with the camera. And doing that, you kind of get a feel for what is it that I really like. And I have times that I work for sound. I think it's a fascinating job. Will I want to be a sound person? No. Do I even know how to sound mix? No. And I respect the But it gave me an opportunity to explore all these different departments and 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 kind of say, okay, so... Uh, now I, I know that I'm more interested in, in the assistant director because I, I kind of like, I, I'm kind of like the one who, you know, decides things, you set mm -hmm. the schedule, you plan the shoot, but then you also, depending on the director, of course, you can also be creative with the director. So right. it's a very, you know, in, in, it's a big, it, it's a role that links you to every department. Okay. Um, so, that's so, nice, you know, so, so let's break it down. Let's start with, mm -hmm. uh, this is for people who want to pursue a career as a production assistant. We're going to get down to the nitty gritty here. What are, we're, I'm going to ask you several questions there and you can answer them in whatever order you want. In the position of a production assistant, I want to know what are the primary duties. I want to know what are the pros and cons. I want to know if you choose this job, what type of jobs can it prepare you for in the future? I want to know what you should strive to master in this position. The characteristic traits, pay, and how do you get a position? So let's start with the first one. What are the primary duties of a production assistant? 
Well, the production assistant, I feel like you have to be willing, because the point is willing, willing to do a bit of everything. There might be a day that you've told, you know, you have to get in the car and just run errands, or there might be a day that you're actually on set, you know, making sure that nobody opens the door, or you have to know to make coffee. So some things are more exciting than others, but I think the primary characteristic is for you to be humble enough to, to get instructions from people understand what you've asked to be done, and, and also, you know, personality. I think half of the time when I work, have production assistants, I think what I look at is mainly their personality. You know, are they willing to, to learn and to, and, and to do the things? Because, again, sometimes they really want to, oh, I really want to be working with camera, you know, and then I'm like, oh, but I really need you right now to make coffee. But then you get to, you know, maybe be with the actor and, and make sure the actor is happy. So, it could really be from the simplest duty to something extremely hard and important, you know? So, uh, so char- you really have to have a broad. So characteristic traits would obviously include patience. You have to be humble. You can't be an egomaniac. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to be detail-oriented. Exactly. Uh, and a quick learner. I mean, you know, you, when you have a production assistant that you have to tell them three times what to do, that that becomes a problem. So you want to make sure that you also, you get the message, you understand what you have to do and, and you're fast thinking. Cause when you're on set, you know, at the end of the day, it's about you have a day to do what you're supposed to do that day. And, and you want people that get, get it, you know? Yeah. So I think so, those are basic. So, so people, if you don't like being told what to do and you have a contempt for authority, this is not the job for you. Uh, it is not. Trust me. Not, not, not. Now, what do you feel are the pros and cons of being a production assistant? Uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, there's, it depends, again, what people consider pros and cons. Of course, usually the production assistant is the one that, you know, gets paid less than everybody else. Um, you're also the first one on set usually. So if call time is at six, the production assistant will probably be on set at five or five thirty. Um, so that could be considered a, you know, a, a con <laughs> to mm-hmm. the job. Uh, but the pros are really that, like I said before, I always tell everybody it's a great opportunity to be a production assistant because you get to work with every department and really figure out what you want to do. And in addition to that, Someday you might be a producer. And I mean, I know you're a producer as well. And the best thing is as a producer, if you've been a production assistant, you know exactly what each department does. And then it's easier for you to relate to departments. And I see that as, an, as a first AD, you know, because I've been assistant to various departments, I can relate to them and communicate with them. And I understand what I can do to make them work better to ensure that we make the film. So, I think it's a great stepping stone for anybody that wants to be in the film, you know, yes, whether you're you... going to end up just being a, P, a production assistant, which is people that have great careers as, as production assistant, by the way, because once you grow in it, you, you really have important roles as a production assistant as well. Mm-hmm. They are in high demand because there's a lot of overturn people because not everybody yeah. can handle that. Again, contempt for authority, not for you. If you're not patient, not for you. So uh, some of the jobs that it can prepare you for would be, of course, obviously producer. But uh, what are some other uh, posi- uh, of course, production assistant, career production assistant. But what are some other jobs that can sprout from starting out as a production assistant? Do you feel are noteworthy? You know, definitely. You know, a, a key production assistant. I mean, a key production assistant is a very important role. And and I actually want to you know say that the production assistant itself it's an extremely important role. People take it for granted, but believe me, you know they are fundamental to the making of a film. But definitely from a production assistant, you can become a, a key production assistant. Again, going back to being an, an AD, a second AD, uh, you, you know, you would probably move from a PA to a second, second AD, to a second AD, to a first assistant director. Um, I know people that, you know, again, are production assistant maybe with the costume department and then they discovered that that's really, you know, their, their dream is to to the customs, which is another amazing, you know, field. I, I just recently heard one of this amazing women that has been working in the industry for 25 years. And when she was talking about her job, I was like, oh, my God, it's so fascinating. So I think 
almost every role in film can be led from being a production assistant. You know, there's no ending uh, when you come in as a production assistant. You can yeah. be a production coordinator, you know? So exactly. it, it just builds up, yeah. Yeah, you can you can be a production assistant in many different departments and you can go from project to project. You say, oh, I like being a production assistant more in fashion or sound or whatever the department is. So it's really great that you check out all of the different departments to see mm -hmm. exactly yeah. what you like. Uh, the pay is not good there. It runs anywhere from being an intern where you don't get paid at all to getting, what is it, minimum minimum wage would be... The yeah, I mean, you know, it, yeah, I mean, it depends. I mean, I, you know, it depends. I think TV, I don't do a lot of TV, but I think TV definitely pays more than independent film, you know. Uh, when you're working in independent film, you might be getting, you know, $125 a day. It really depends. Yeah. Um, but you start this job again, you, 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 you have to start it with the goal of it being a stepping stone to something else. So if money is your primary concern, then you're going to have a problem because you're not going to make much being a production assistant. But if you know that that is a stepping stone, then um, you need to supplement your income with a, another type of job. But again, it is to move on so keep that in mind now how does one go about getting a job as a production assistant my darling <laughs> you know um i would say there's you know one step is now with internet there's so many websites and there's a lot of free websites so you know you have like we mentioned before there's mandy.com there's uh you know even craigslist i mean i got a lot of jobs out of craigslist to be honest it's, it's amazing uh but then there's also the the paid websites and, and a lot of blogs as well. Um, on the other note is networking. I always say networking, networking, networking. Unfortunately, you tend to live your life networking and then you, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like, oh, where's my personal life? But networking is basic. I see most of my work today, I have people calling me and it's either people that I work with before. So, you know, sometimes they're on set, you meet another department, you exchange information and a month later they call you, you know what, Lila, I'm looking for... So networking, I think nowadays is one of the biggest keys to get work. Yes, um, it's all word of mouth. It's it really is exactly. in the film industry, mm -hmm. especially. Uh, it really is word of mouth, and and you go from project to project, and the people that you work really work with really refer you uh, to the other people. So it's really exactly. important. Really. Yeah. Okay. So we have, we are finished with the production assistant say, okay, you did a great job. Oh my God. I <laughs> love working with you. Would you like to move up to the next position, which is second assistant director, right? Yes. Okay. So tell yes. us, tell us what the primary duties are that vary uh, from the production assistant, tell us what the primary duties are as a second assistant director. Well, let's start actually by saying, and that you know, there's actually the second second assistant director. I know. Usually, the <laughs> there's, a, there's a wait a minute. I I completely skipped the third because it actually would be third, and then second second, and then second. Yeah, and, and it's funny in Europe they use third, the word third a lot. Here they they have second second. It's it's interesting how it's so different. Like in Europe, you'll have the third yeah. assistant director. Here they just go to second second. But in reality, you know. The second second is usually the person that is either in charge of background actors, so they usually put the second second to deal with all the extras. You know, they'll have them sign paperwork, they'll keep the extras in the whole room, so they start learning how to coordinate um, uh, cast. Or they'll be the ones, you know, that the first AD is saying, get me actor in five minutes. So the second second has to run and make sure that the actor is ready and, and you know, or and if they're running late on makeup. He, so I think it's a great, Hard because you kind of you're still on set, you're still you know getting involved, but you're very in touch with either the actors or or the or the background, which I still to this day love that. You know, I sometimes also still do second second, and it's so much fun, and and uh, it's really one of the sides that you you know it's it's if you enjoy because you're still coordinating a big chunk of of what the scene will be for that day, and you feel like your your role is extremely important to making sure that the actor is ready and on time on set. 
So I would say, you know, second, second, but again, it doesn't mean that usually you, you would actually go from pH second, second to second, but let's say that should be, you know, the, the, the scale. The second idea, on the other hand, funny enough, is more the person that deals with paperwork. So the second, second is usually the one that does the call sheet. You know, sometimes we take for granted the call sheet, but it's, it's fundamental that the call sheet is perfect, that has all the information. And, you know, a second idea will spend their day prepping the call sheet for the day after, calling actors, making sure that everything is set for the following day, as well as, you know, dealing with all the paperwork for the actors. So the second actually tends to spend more time in, you know, in the production office, whether it will be a mobile production office or on set. Um, and, you know, you really, a lot of people, I know a lot of first ideas that have never been second because you have to be very detail-oriented uh, when sending out a call sheet and, you know, and having all the information. Um, and other people, on the other note, like being second and would never want to be first ID, you know? And then other people, like I have done, like I know other people as well, we do a bit of everything. Because when I do short films with low budget, you know, I'm my first and my second ID. Mm -hmm. So... But it, it, on one note, it's kind of like, you know, that's, that's a little bit the road, the road path. So the second segment will be dealing with, with the, the extras and, the, and the sending the actors to set, communicating with the first AD. The second AD is really the, the turning point for the following day, setting up everything with the actors, making sure if you have to pick up an actor, there's a car service, and everything has to be very well laid out on the call sheet because then you get the actor coming to set at 10, PM, at 10 a.m. when their call was in, you know, 5 a.m., and mm -hmm. they're like, well, you know, the call sheet set. So it's a very important document, and you always want to make sure that your second AD is somebody that knows the drill and knows how to, you know, how to prepare, and then they have to print the sides, make sure they have the scripts sites for the following day. So it's definitely a, um, you know, a job that requires a lot of detail oriented people. Mm, okay, great. So how, okay, so you're the second director, and then you did a great job. Hey, do you want to be first assistant director? Again, what are the primary duties, the pros and cons? If you choose the job, what are some of the jobs that uh, it can prepare you for in the future. Um, you know, what should you strive to master in the position, the characteristic traits, the pay, and how do you get the position? Well, the first assistant director, I mean, first and foremost, it's communication, um, logistics. Uh, I'm going to say you have to have a, you have to be calm. When I say calm, that means that the first assistant director is the person that any problem that occurs on set, will go to him. And you cannot be, you know, if you start frantically going, you know, and not knowing <laughs> what to do, so I always say, I always keep peace. You know, sometimes I'll, people will come to me, like, I don't know, the, the, you know, we lost a light. So you literally can't shoot the scene because you lost the light or because the camera is broken. So if I start panicking, everybody else is going to panic because everybody comes to you. You're the reference point for everybody. And people always say, you know, the first idea is the boss. You're not really the boss, but you definitely are the one that keeps every department head informed. So you have to know the, the day plan from head to toes. And most of all, before you even get to set, you are the one that your director and your producer count on to do a schedule. So they come to you with the script, you read the script, and you tell them, we should be filming scene one, five, six, seven on this day, and we should be seeing, you know. So you really have to know why and when and, you know, depending, of course, on locations and actors because there's a lot of conflicts. Maybe you have an actor who's not available on day five and maybe the location is only available. So it kind of becomes a puzzle. But as an assistant director, you're really the one who's going to schedule out how many scenes we're shooting each day. And if we don't get those scenes done, they're going to come to you. You said that we could shoot this, you know, on, on one day. So you really have a very important role, and I say risky role. Um, you definitely have to be a patient, a person that has, you know, patience and I think interior calm, calmness. And, and you have, kind of have to be a leader because everybody at the end of the day is going to come to you with questions. It's going to come to you for anything. So you have to have the leader siding you, and I think understanding people's uh, 
personalities is very important because the director, the DP, you know, they're all going to, I think when you understand, I always say I love to spend a lot of time with my director and with my director of photography prior to filming because I want to understand how they think. Each director likes to be spoken in a different way. And you want to capture what is the best way for me to communicate with my director. Because when I'm on set, I don't want to figure them out. I need to be able to, they have to trust me. There has to be a connection, a chemistry. It's like a relationship. You know, you have to build a chemistry. And you definitely don't want to do it on day one. Because then, you know, he, he doesn't understand you. You don't understand him. And everything goes through. Hell in a yeah. handbasket. <laughs> exactly. oh. So oh. communication and, yeah, personalities, I think, is very important. Yeah, for sure. Boy, you, you definitely covered that. Now, you have done a great job, and they have promoted you now from first assistant director to assistant director. Again, what are the primary duties, pros and cons? What job can it prepare you for? Um, characteristic traits. Okay, so don't kill me. <laughs> I'm going to correct you. Uh -oh. But that's why we're here, because we're All learning. Right. So the first assistant director is really the last layer in the assistant director field. The yes. first assistant is the assistant director. Is the assistant director, uh, director right. But, you know, it's funny because most assistant directors would usually, it will trend into becoming producers or directors. Uh, the trend seems to go more into producing. So a lot of first AD actually become producers. It's really where the trend goes more um, because... <clears throat> It just kind of like, you know, the producer and the assistant director actually have a lot in common. Uh, the producer is really the person that, you know, that builds the project. Uh, and from the exterior, I'm going to say, while the AD is the one that builds the project in the interior, you know, really on the filming part. But they're really like a role that works together constantly. And for my knowledge, most first cities become producers. And also because the role of the first AD, it's really, I think, physically, it becomes uh, more and more exhausting as you, you know, as you grow older. <laughs> you spend a lot of hours spending. Mm. So they tend to definitely go into the producer's route, um, which is a beautiful route because I think being a producer, it's, you know, I, I admire producers. I, I do producing as well. I've only produced short films. Um, I definitely like to be a first city more, but I, I admire a producer because it's such a fulfilling role. You know, you have to raise funds. You have to really put together a cast and crew. And, and especially if you're the type of producer that, the creative type of producer that maybe, you know, you, you choose a script and you hire the director. It's really such a full circle of making a movie. Um, but definitely that tends to be, you know, what first cities would go for is producing and some of them actually stay for cities forever you know or moving to directing mm. now what would you say should be a person's process in deciding uh if they should work on a particular project what are some things that that they need to consider that they might not because you know how some people take a job and they go damn i wish i would have known i wouldn't have taken mm -hmm. this job <laughs> What would you say should be some things that they should consider? You know, first and foremost, I always like to read the script because I think I think it's important to work on projects that somewhere somehow you feel that you can that you want to work on them. You know, I'm not saying that in the past I haven't worked maybe on things that I wasn't really proud of, but in general, my first thing I want to read the script and I want to feel comfortable with the story that I'm going to be part of. Um, that would be my first step. Second. You really want to make sure that you have a that you sense a good bonding with your director. Again, you know, I go to interviews. Um, if you don't feel like there's a chemistry, and usually you feel it kind of right away. And if you don't, sometimes I would say, you know, maybe it's not the right project for me. And and definitely you want to make sure that you know what your pay is because the worst thing is when you take a job and then you know, you're working so hard and then you complain, oh, I need more money. I think that once you choose to take a job, whether you're getting paid zero or 50 or 100 or $2,000 a day, you are committed to the project and you give the best to the project because you are going to be working, you know, 12, 14, 15, I don't even know how many hours a day. So I think you want to be honest to yourself, true to yourself. 
and say, okay, this is the pay. I'm going to take it. I'm not going to complain. Or talk about it before you take the job. You know, if you want more money, if you feel like, then make sure you deal with that right away. Uh, and definitely, I think, you know, the script and, and having chemistry with the director or whoever is hiring, whether it's the director or the producer, because then it becomes, you know, it's painful if you're not on the same page. And things mm. happen later on that you can't control. But whatever you can control prior, I think it's important for you to um, to establish because, you know, it's, we have a great job. We're making art and, and we're blessed, so we should be happy when we do it. Yeah. Mm. For sure. Now, you uh, recently, uh, you well, actually, you have your upcoming directorial debut. And can you tell us a little bit about what you're working on? Did you write it? Oh, tell us all about it. What What's the name of it? What are you doing? Give us the scoop. You know, I'll tell you that I wrote, there was a time in my life that I started writing a lot of short stories. I was in 2008. I just wrote a lot of stuff and they were kind of in a drawer sitting there. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year I kind of like started reading the stories again. And I really felt like I really want to, you know, the, it was kind of like a moment that I realized, I think I want to direct as well, which was kind of like a scary thought because I was like, I really didn't want to tap into it, but then it's coming out of you and you know you just can't control it. So I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And so I took my stories, but I'm not a screenwriter. And so I called one of my writers that I worked with in the past. We actually uh, worked on a short film, The Blue's Note, which has had a beautiful path in the short film uh, festival. And I called him up and I said, listen, I, you know, I want to work on this project. And I sent him one of my stories. And he uh, wrote the screenplay. So definitely it comes from my one of my ideas, one of my, you know, uh, stories, but he definitely brought it to, to shape and he brought his input as well. And it's been such an awesome process to work with a writer because, of course, I feel it's my baby, but then it becomes his baby as well. So we kind of went back and forth for a long time just finding a place that it works for both of us. And I think it's a marvelous uh, process that I look forward to doing more and more in my life. Um, right now, we are finally, I'm not going to tell you the title because it, it's actually still a work in progress, but we're very excited because I'm going to start doing my casting now. I have an awesome producer. I have my director of photography. So we're actually going to go location scatter next week. Um, the story is about, um, I'm going to say it's about chemistry. I'm <laughs> going back to the word chemistry. It's about chemistry. It's about relationship and mainly um, how to keep your couple together. And I'm not married. I don't have children. And actually, when I wrote this story, I'm thinking, God, people are going to ask me, what do you know about couples and relationships? And what I realized is that it really comes from my experience as a child. One of my joys still today is to look at my parents and see how in their marriage, they always made sure they took care of their relationship. As much as they made sure that me and my sister, you know, and our lives and everything was awesome in their career, they make sure they were in love still today. And I see so many young couples that unfortunately, you know, sometimes you get caught up in life and you kind of forget about your, your relationship and then your kids go off to college and, you know, you don't know who you're married to. And this is really like a small little uh, story, uh, but really about, you know, just taking that moment for yourself. And, and, and there's a little bit of, you know, I'm going to say eroticness, but, you know, uh -oh. uh, and people... Uh -oh. the, the people that are bad is that it's smart, it's smart and sexy, and I think that's actually the right word, smart and Woo! sexy. Because smart I think um, I'm excited. I'm very excited about well, it. So well, hopefully, you know, this winter will start working well, on it. Well, we we def we got one minute, so we definitely want to find out a little bit more about it. Uh, when when can we expect that it will be out for us to see a little glimpse of it? And uh, are you are you gonna are you gonna do the film festival first? Or are you gonna put it on YouTube? What are you gonna do? I'm really striving for film festivals because I love film festivals, and I think it's just a great way to you know take a tour your your project around. And we're planning to film this in January. So that's why now I'm like really focusing mm. on, you know, getting everything in place. And so hopefully, you know, by the end of winter, fall, we'll start seeing it somewhere. And, um, and I'm actually most probably going to be doing a Kickstarter campaign very soon. Yeah. I just try to avoid it, but, you know, I realize that it's actually good to, to 
for everybody to kind of put yourself out there and, and see, you know, who's going to support me and why. So as much as it's always like that scary place, do I want to go and ask people for it? But I think it's a great way to see, you know, how much are you worth or really what, what do people think? Do people... Yeah leaving you so that's going to be exciting um yeah you just worked you just worked on the spike lee kickstarter campaign for uh the feature film the blood of jesus so you definitely should know how to get your own kickstarter campaign going for I, sure. <laughs> I hope so you know i worked in a lot of kickstarter campaigns for a lot of short films that i've done and of course you know, right now we were raising, you know, a million dollar, which was a big uh, project. And But I did learn that it doesn't matter what project you're working for, whether it's $5,000 that you're trying to raise or 50 or a million, you still have to put the same energy. And definitely one thing I've learned about working on this um, campaign uh, for Spike Lee was that you want to make sure you have a team. Sometimes we take for granted, you know, we just put our little Kickstarter project and think it's going to fly on its own. And... You want to have people that work with you, that w meet with you every morning, and that brainstorm with you because it makes such a difference. Because maybe I'll come up with an idea, and maybe you, Priscilla, will say, yes, that's a great idea, but let's do it this way. So as a team, we, we help raise this money because it doesn't matter who you are, if you're the, you know, famous or not. I think it, you just need that. It gives you that energy as well you know, to have people surrounding you and working with you. You learn a lot about yourself. I think it was a learning experience for, you know, for all of us to work on this campaign. And, and you feel like, I mean, of course, in this particular case, we were doing something big, you know. But Absolutely. even when I've done my smaller campaigns, coming from fundraising for nonprofit, you know, I brought a lot of that into a lot of my campaigns. But definitely, you need to be on top of it. You can't just put it out there and think that people no. are going to just no. put it on your Facebook, you know. That that is for sure. And that, that yeah. I'm so glad that you're leaving us with that note. So everybody make sure that when you do your campaign, whether it's Kickstarter, I prefer Indiegogo because you get the money. Uh, <laughs> so uh, whatever you're doing, you got to have a team for sure. So we are going to look forward to seeing your film, uh, Layla or Lila. 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 <laughs> we are going to look forward to hearing more about it, but you know what you got to do. You got to get a website. So email me because you know I have a small business and we do websites. So I'll hook you up, girlfriend. But we got to get you a website and get that thing up. But uh, we will find out more about her campaign. Go to friend her. I'm sure she'll accept you as a friend. Uh, go to, you're on Facebook, right? What am I, why do I yes, not have yes. your Facebook? What are you, what is Oh, your yeah, you do, you do. What's it's uh, Lila, Lila Petrone Peinado. You, okay. I know you were friends on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I know we're friends on Facebook, but I, I, I didn't write it down. I have your Twitter, which your Twitter name is on on the road to art so check lila out and friend her on facebook uh and also follow her on twitter her twitter address is on the road to art and also check her out on imdb but if you go to at least tweet her or friend her you'll find out about her uh film campaign because i'm sure she's going to be posting lots of stuff on there and let's talk further about getting your website up okay but we gotta go because we are way over and i'm gonna get in trouble so say goodbye. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, it was thank great talking to you. Thank oh, you so much. Thank you for coming on. You have really helped so many people who were questioning their reality of whether or not they wanted to go in the film business. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Thank you, Layla Petroni. Check her out on film, uh, Facebook and also on Twitter. And we'll see you next week. Say goodbye to your fans, my darling. Grazie, grazie, Priscilla. Okay, proxy to you too, people. Bye. Ciao. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on LA Talk Radio.